Today we're going to look at a common problem for anybody trying to build a website, and that is images. Where do you get good, high-quality images for your website? Uh, in this situation, my client has taken a couple photos in her actual uh, house. So this image here is something that she was able to supply me with. She hired a professional photographer to take it. But even with all of those photos she took, there are still more pages than there are photos. So this image ended up being used or repeated throughout the site. And in other situations, I was able to create high quality images and implement them where necessary. So an example of that would be uh, color consultations. So I was I photoshopped an image of these hands with this uh, color wheel or color guidebook in there. And you can see how to do that in this tutorial. So for one like whole room design, you can see this is the repeated image, but we're gonna go into the Google search, uh, Google image search. We're gonna find an image like this by going uh, hands at table, labeled for reuse to make sure the copyright, you're not infringing on anybody's copyright, and then larger than two megapixels for a full background for what I'm doing is a good size. You might be able to get away with a smaller uh, image size than that, but what I need to uh, do here with a big background is two megapixels. And then you hit search and then you find something like this. I'm going to copy this image by right clicking and then saying copy image and I'll paste that in Photoshop. So this is the starter of the background image that I'm going to be using. Next I'm going to find some blueprints because in whole room design you're not going to just be sitting here at the table with your tablet. There will also be some blueprints uh, kicking around. So same thing, we'll go back into uh, Chrome here and I looked up architectural drawing with those same usage rights as labeled for reuse and larger than two megapixels and all of this came up. I'm going to copy this image and I'm going to go back into Photoshop and we're going to paste command V. There it is. Uh, with my M tool, I uh, just pressed M and that creates a marquee and I can delete some of the, the actual uh, sp uh, specifics of what drawing this is and I'm going to uh, shift command I to invert that selection and then press delete and then command D so now I've got this uh, flat bit Oh, there's some extra there M tool again just pressed M highlighted it and deleted command D to get rid of the selection pressed V to switch back to my selection tool so here I have uh, the blueprints cool but they're not interacting with the scene at all which is what I ultimately want this to look like. I want it to look like these are on the table and flat. So if I do Command T, now I've got my transform tool. Great, I can make this bigger and smaller. But what I want to do is put this in perspective. So if I hold Option, I can manipulate. Is it Option or Command? It's Command. So if I hold the Command key, I can actually stretch this guy and put it into perspective. So now what I'm trying to do is mimic what would look like something lying flat on the table. And this can take some uh, playing around with before it looks right. But if I do something like that, I don't mind if it covers up the iPhone a bit. Um, I can go back in and make the iPhone look like it's covering it and that might actually help it look more convincing. So we're just gonna rough this in here, make it look like it's lying flat on the table let's say something like that and then we'll hit uh, you know what I'm gonna bring that down a little farther you know what that looks pretty good to me so I'm gonna hit return feels like it's lying flat ish but it's under his hand so I'm gonna hide that and I'm gonna create with my uh, let's see what tool do I want to use here um, do, 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 lasso tool. You can get more meticulous with this, but I am just going to trace roughly his hand for now. And we'll go back in and tighten this up later. But if I roughly trace this selection and then hold down shift to get more pixels selected there, I can get a rough area where I want that uh, that image to show up. And I can shift command I to create an inverted selection. And then for 
this layer, if I if I uh, hit the image mask right here, that's going to create a mask and it's going to show whatever's behind it. So where was my blueprints? If I have them show up again and put them under, then it looks like you've got some stuff showing through. And I can move that as needed. But realistically, you're not going to have a sharp edge like that, right? So let's go back in and paint with the brush tool some of these pixels back into place. And now I'm painting the pixels back in. And then if I hit X, I will be masking again, so I can mask some of this stuff out. And this is just a quick job to show you that it is doable. What am I doing? Painting in, and X removes them. So we're getting close. I just want to kind of speed through this. Obviously, if I was uh, doing this for real, I would take a bit more time. But for the sake of the video, I want to uh, speed it up a bit. So now we're, we're getting closer to something that looks like there are some blueprints on the table. And we have problems right here where the phone's looking a little blurry and the photo itself is looking a bit too sharp. So how we can deal with that is we can zoom in a bit and get a bit tighter as far as oops, creating uh, some sharper lines and some blurrier lines where necessary. I'm going to go with my sharp lasso, polygonal lasso here to create a sharper selection of this phone because we expect phones to look sharp and fill that all in so now we've got the phone looking too sharp and some of this stuff looking too blurry and this paper itself if you look somewhere or some of these areas are these lines are really in focus and this phone is really out of focus so we can fix that by I'm gonna clean up this part too because it looks a little bit weird there so that looks tighter so this this stuff's too sharp so let's get some blur happening and I'm gonna just combine these two layers for now actually no I'm gonna blur this first so I'm gonna grab the blur tool I'm gonna start blurring up some of this stuff and I've got strength 10 I could probably bump that up to 36 or so so now we've got the actual blueprints being blurred out which is good because that's starting to feel like it's in the environment next I want this crazy sharp line to also get blurred so that it looks like the phone isn't just suddenly very sharply connected to this page and I'm gonna merge the two files together to do that normally you can create uh, duplicates and backups but you shouldn't be merging pixels together um, in case you want to go back and edit but for the sake of this demo I'm gonna do it uh, shift how do we do that Command E merges them. So I just did a Command E there, and I'm just going to blur that part where the phone and the blueprints are touching. And I'm going to blur against his arm here, so it looks like his arm might be on the blueprints. And now we've got a more convincing situation where the arm and the blueprints are, and the phone are all in, existing in the same environment. So now it looks like this guy might actually be doing some work with some blueprints. And uh, it looks like the, the darkness of this image, the blueprints look a little too light. So I'm going to grab my uh, burn tool over here. And I'm going to burn that a bit. Oh, no, that's not a good idea because it's not picking up anything on the, on the uh, white pixels. It's just darkening the, uh, the dark pixels. I don't want that. So I might actually just grab the caveman spray brush here at. Um, Let's see, brush.
wash black oh, hardness is like zero and opacity is we'll just go all the way down to like four bring the size way up and now I can darken you see I'm just kind of like darkening stuff over here and creating a a bit of an environmental effect makes it feel like it's in a uh, light box or something so now I'm just kind of darkening things up and making it blend all in so now we've got it feeling like it's on the table a bit more than usual that phone is a bit sharp I'm not gonna worry too much because at first glance it does look like there are blueprints on the table so that's the final image you can save that out put it on your website and uh, you can go from there it's all copyright free stuff and you just saved yourself from having to buy a stock photo hopefully that helped you goodbye